Welcome to First Grapevine, a United Methodist Church. We're glad you have joined us for worship in person or online. Please take a moment and register your attendance by either filling out one of the registration cards or online through our church website, firstgrapevine.org, or our mobile app. Three, two, yeah! At the count of three, when children open the shoe boxes, they're so excited. I mean, it's just been incredible. Kids are so excited, giving them a gift, do it in Jesus' name, and that's what this is all about. Jesus loves you. It's a gospel opportunity. It's the chance for the children to change the entire life. The word of God is spreading. The gospel is advancing. It is impacting children. It is impacting families. It is impacting the world greatly. Thank you for praying. Thank you for giving. God will bless, and God will use your gift to touch the life of a child and to be able to do it in Jesus' name. So thank you. Thank you for being a part of it. God bless each and every one of you. Good morning. My name is Jim Garvin, and I'm here today to ask you to help support our troops. Although it's been 50 years, it seems sometimes it seems like only yesterday since I won that national lottery and my Uncle Sam sent me on a year-long, all-expense-paid camping and hunting vacation in Southeast Asia. I remember how lonely and scared I was at times living in that jungle in Vietnam. I also remember how exciting it was to hear my name at mail call and receive a package of goodies from home. I also remember the look of disappointment on the faces of some of my fellows who week after week never received anything. Fortunately, my family came to the rescue and started sending packages large enough that I could not carry them by myself, and so I was able to share them even more with my buddies. My mother's Women's Society of Christian Service Circle also adopted our platoon, and we started receiving cookies powdered drink mix, and other goodies on a regular basis. You have the opportunity to make a soldier very far away a happy fellow. We will be collecting snacks, toiletries, and other goodies to send to our soldiers across the ocean and around the world. Please support our troops by donating items. These troops are around the world protecting your right to worship here this morning. Thank you, and God bless. Good morning. Welcome to worship. We're glad you're here. We're going to start out like we always do, with singing to God. And you notice our little band is growing a little bit every week. We encourage you to approach worship this morning with the same kind of energy as this young lady does right here. Here we go. There were walls between us. By the cross you came and broke them down. You broke them down. There were chains around us. By your grace we are no longer bound. No longer bow. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You call my name. My heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. the darkness shaking all the dead are coming back to life i'm back to life hear the song awaken and all creation singing we're alive because you're alive you call me out of the grave call me into the light 
called my name, then my heart came alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. And what a love we found, death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me your love is greater your love is stronger your love awakens 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 me your love is greater your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Yes, good morning. I hope that song woke you up. This next one is, is an incredibly written song, and it deals with some of the biggest challenges that each one of us carry around inside our own hearts. So Ginny's going to lead us in this one, but I really hope you'll sing along, too. Remind me once again just who I am. 
Sing with us now. Come on. You say I am loved. I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong. And I think I am weak. You say I am held. I am far and short. When I don't long, you say. So we're so glad to have you here. If I don't know you, I'm Carly. I'm one of the pastors. And we believe that because you're here, because you chose to come and worship with us, that we're a little bit more complete as the body of Christ. Amen. Before the ushers come forward to receive this morning's offering, let us take a deep breath and let go of anything distracting us from worship. And let us pray. God, we're grateful for your presence with us this morning that you meet us here in worship. God, some of us come to worship in celebration and joy over the things that have been happening this week. And God, we're grateful that you've been a part of that, that you're the one that is worth celebrating, that you're the cause for all things good in this world. God, some of us come with things that are heavy on our hearts, maybe going through a transition or some sort of grief, maybe something that no one knows, but God, you know it. And we pray that uh, you would take those situations and you would transform them, that you would bring resurrection where there's no hope, because that's the kind of God you are. We ask all these things in the name of your son. Amen. Will the ushers come forward? Walking around these walls I thought by now they'd fall But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me yet Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still enough My heart will sing your praise again. Your 
Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. Still in your hands, this is my confidence. You've never failed me yet. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness, your faithfulness. I'm still in your hands. This is my confidence. You never. Now we're going to invite all the children to come down to the front and find Monica up here somewhere. Come find her. All right, y'all. Come on up. Good morning. All right. Y'all want to come sit over here? All right. Good morning. Good morning. Come sit down. All right, you guys. I have three stories to tell you. So I'm going to talk really fast, okay? And I want you to help me. We're going to look at these three stories. I want you to tell me what they have in common, okay? So here's the first, a picture of the first story. What do we think this story is? What do you think? Oh, what do you think? Um, Moza, Mosic, Moses, I almost had it. Yeah, Moses, and what is he doing? Can you tell? Saving. The people because um, a big wave is coming. 
That's so good. Yeah, he's saving the people, and there is a big wave. This is a picture of when Moses parted the Red Sea. All right? We're going to talk about this story. This is the other, another story we're going to talk about. Who knows what this is a picture of? What do you think it is, Max? Um, I think that... Um, uh, yeah. That's okay. Um, what do you think, Quinn? The last feast. The last feast. What else do we call this? Do you have another word for it? I forgot. It's okay. You have another word for it? What is it? Last supper. The last supper. Did you know that or did you read my paper? Or both? <laughs> All right. So we've got the last supper. We're going to talk about this story. And then we're also going to talk about this story. Has anyone seen? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So who is this? Coco. Coco, yes. And he likes to play guitar. Loves to play guitar. Miguel. Miguel is his name. He's from the movie Coco, right? Have y'all seen this movie? Okay. Like a billion times. It's so good. Okay, so I'll t let's talk about Coco first. So in this movie, this little friend Miguel, he loves music, right? And he has a lot of special songs in the movie and that he sings and he plays. And this movie is all about remembering important people in our lives that maybe aren't in our lives anymore, right? So this is an important movie. And do you guys remember the song called Remember Me from this movie? Yes, it's so good. He's talking about remembering someone that's important in their life that maybe passed away or isn't there anymore. So that's kind of what Coco. So I want you to think about Coco while we think about these other two stories. So this one, let's go back to the first one. Moses parting the Red Sea, right? So I'm going to tell you the so fastest version, and then you guys can go look it up in a Bible or talk to your families later and hear the whole story. But basically what happened is God's people, they were in a really bad place. They were in Egypt. There was a very mean ruler named Pharaoh, and he made them be slaves, and he, made, he was super mean. Everybody was so mean to them and treated them horribly, and they were sad. And so God made a way for them to escape. And Moses put his big staff, his big stick down in the middle of this big sea. And it, whoop, all the water went to both sides so that God's people could walk through on dry land to be safe. Okay? And so, oh, the other thing I was going to tell you is they, every year, God's people, the Israelites, they would celebrate this day. Because they wanted to remember what God had done. Just like the song from Coco, right? They were going to remember this amazing thing that God had done to help them be safe. And then, lots and lots of years later, we have the Last Supper, right? Jesus knew that he was about to have to leave his friends. He was about to have to die. And so he wanted to have one last meal with them. And they wanted, he wanted to tell them to remember the things that they had done together. And they had, the meal they had was kind of like the first communion. And we're going to take communion later today, which I love getting to take communion with our church family. It's the best. And so when Jesus took this uh, communion with his disciples, his friends, he said, every time you do this, I want you to remember me, okay? That's why Pastor Carly's gonna say in a little bit, we do this in remembrance of Jesus. So Jesus is saying, I want you to remember the great things that I've done for you. I want you to remember how much I love you. Just like the song in Coco, right? Remember me. He says, remember me when you take this meal. So what I want us to do today is I want y'all, when you come up here to take communion, I want you to be thinking of a thing that God has done or a thing that you know about that you want to thank God for and remember while you take communion, okay? So it could be maybe... Um, Maybe God, maybe you have like the best teacher ever this year and you want to thank God for that in your life and remember God's goodness in giving you that amazing teacher. Or maybe like you think about a Bible story like one of these or one that you learned in Sunday school and you want to remember what God has done. Okay, so when y'all come up here, you can do that and remember what he's done for you. Okay, what do you think, Quinn? How did you know I had an amazing teacher this year? I just guessed because teachers are amazing. They're the best, aren't they? All right, so we're going to think about that. And then when you come up to do communion, you can say a little prayer and thank God for the thing that you want to remember. Does that sound good? All right, let's pray. 
God, thank you so much for these friends who are here with us today. Thank you for our friends who are at home. And God, I just am so grateful for how good you are and how you are always with us. God, I hope that as we take communion today, we would remember how good you are. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, thanks, guys. The Bible speaks often about two basic needs, to draw nutrition from food and to live in community with other people. We'll see how from Bible times to the present day that sharing a meal together can provide nourishment for both body and soul. As we begin the fall time, we will explore the significance of meals in scripture and how worship can take place not just in the sanctuary, but in the everyday rhythms of life, like sharing a meal. We will discuss the importance of bread in Scripture, the meaning of the Jewish Passover meal, the purpose of Jesus' communion meal with His disciples. We will accompany the sermon series with an opportunity to share meals with the First Church family during dinner church on Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. beginning September 28th in room 2013. So we just completed a dinner church and it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. A really laid back place to share a meal with some friends. Um, we invited some friends to come and, and was happy that they joined us. Um, and we sat around and enjoyed a meal and shared some prayer concerns. We talked a little bit about the um, devotional that Carly shared with us. And it's just what I needed in the middle of a week. I enjoyed every minute. I enjoyed the time to talk. I enjoyed the food, of course. And then having that opportunity to hear a message and actually be able to have time right when it was fresh to stop and talk about it, maybe have some questions and kind of clarify what we're thinking. It was just a joy. The room was full. People were smiling. We had laughter. It was, it was an oasis where we actually refreshed our body and our soul. I was so glad I was able to be here tonight. I hope you'll come and see. The table is set, and we invite you now to be drawn by the aroma of the bread of life as we join in community to worship at the table. So if you didn't get a chance to join us on Wednesday for Dinner Church, I hope you'll think about joining us again this week. You can kind of see that room was crowded, so we're thinking about moving it, so be be looking at your emails, and we'll have people in the parking lots directing you if we move it. But it's a great way to get to know other people in the church, and it's a great way uh, to worship in a different way, and kind of it kind of reminds us what worship really is. So my grandparents live in the area, and I go, I'll bring them lunch every now and then, and so on Friday, I went to bring them dinner, dinner actually, and I told my grandma, I said, Top, we call her Top, I said, Top, I think I'm going to tell our family secret on Sunday. And she said, oh, what's her, what do you mean? And this is a secret that my gra originated with my maternal grandmother and kind of got passed on to my mom, and then it's passed on to me and my siblings. And it's something that whenever the topic comes up, my mom always, like, reminds me, now, don't tell people about this or we'll be judged. But I think I need to share this with you. When we eat French toast for breakfast, we don't use syrup, and we don't use powdered sugar, and we don't uh, put nicely sliced fruit on top. We eat our French toast with ketchup. <laughs> okay, that was not the reaction. <laughs> and I know it sounds weird, but hear me out. There's the savory, eggy bread with the tang of ketchup, and those two together remind me of my childhood, okay? I know it's a little weird, my mom told us this story of when she was little, uh, she went over to a friend's house and they had French toast and she said, can I have some ketchup? And they said, for what? And she said, oh, never mind. <laughs> and so she always like warned us, now if they serve French toast, don't tell them you eat it with ketchup. And <laughs> I've kind of grown out of that phase now, but it's a reminder to me when I eat French toast of the family I come from. We're Reinekes. We are learners. We're not scared of adventure. We're there for each other and we care for each other. 
And it's small memories embedded into things like food that can remind us of our values and who God created us to be. I know it might seem kind of hokey to spend a month and a half talking about food in the Bible, but I'll say that I've said this before and I'll say it again. Either nothing is sacred or everything is sacred. And I'm going to choose to believe that God can make everything sacred if we let him. God takes this normal, these normal mundane things and makes them holy. And so that's exactly what we're talking about today. We're staying in the book of Exodus uh, like we were last week if you were here. We talked about, last week we talked about the story of the Hebrew people who had just come out of captivity in Egypt where they were enslaved. And when they finally got free, they finally got into the wilderness, the first thing they do is complain about their lack of food. And God hears that complaint and God provides the manna, this quick bread, this like ready to make accessible food for them. And God provides. And we remember that God always provides for us, maybe in ways we don't expect, but it's there. And so today, today we're going to rewind a little bit. So go back through the Red Sea and go back to Egypt where the Hebrew people are being enslaved. Moses and God have been pleasing, pleading with the Pharaoh to let the people go. And this Passover meal is part of the last bit before they start their journey into the wilderness. So I'm going to read from Exodus 12. That's the second book in your Bible. It tells the story of Moses and the Hebrew people. And I want you to reflect on the situation that they're in. These people have been withstanding terrible treatment from Egypt. And this is what God tells them to do. This is what's important to them. You should observe the festival of unleavened bread. Because on this precise day, I brought you out of the land of Egypt in military formation. You should observe this day in every generation as a regulation for all time. In the first month from the evening of the 14th day until the evening of the 21st day, you should eat unleavened bread. For seven days, no yeast should be found in your house because whoever eats leavened bread will be cut off from the Israelite community, whether the person is an immigrant or a native of the land. You should not eat anything made with yeast in all your settlements. You should only eat unleavened bread. And it kind of goes on to tell uh, some of the regulations and some of the rituals that they're going to partake in. And Moses goes on to say, Remember this day, which is the day that you came out of Egypt, out of the place you were slaves, because the Lord acted with power to bring you out there, out of there. In other words, Moses is saying through God, God and Moses are saying, and before we go on this wilderness journey, before uh, we get ready to go, I know there's a lot of anxiety. I know there are a lot of unknowns. I know it's chaotic and hectic and you're getting ready to go, but let's stop, eat, remember, and give thanks. Let's remember what God has done for us and how God has been with us in the hard times. And if you've been part of a Passover meal or you've learned about it, it's this meal where every piece of food has symbolism. It's, it tells the story of who God was, who we are, and who we are to God. And so it's like Moses is saying, before we put on the different hats we wear or the identities that we assume, who are we really and what are we about? And they're told to do this over and over every year to remember these important truths and to remember their story. When the Jews later return from Babylonian captivity, the celebration deepens in meaning. Think about it, going through that twice. And then this is how, as that kind of evolved, this is how Jesus experienced the meal. He would go to Jerusalem with his friends and they would have the sacrifice. And this is what the disciples celebrated in the upper room. And then again, shortly after Jesus dies, the temple's destroyed and people couldn't make sacrifices. So they moved this celebration, this remembrance meal to their homes. And they, it became the Seder meal, the Passover meal that people celebrate today. When I was in seminary, I had a Jewish friend who hosted a learning Seder for uh, the other students of different faiths who, uh, to tell us, you know, this is our story. This is the exodus from Egypt. This is how God has provided. 
And throughout this time, throughout time, this meal gains more and more significance when you take into account events like the Holocaust or the suffering of Jewish people in recent times. It reminds people of who they are, where they come from, and how God has remained faithful. It connects people for generations and around the world. This meal. And it's part of our lineage, too. It's part of our roots where we draw the sacrament of Holy Communion from. Because while Jesus gathered in that upper room for the meal, ritual meal of Passover, the night before he was to be killed, he did a few things differently. And he changed the meaning. He took bread and broke it, passed it to the disciples and said, this is my body given for you. And then he took the cup of wine, passed it around and said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. We call communion a lot of different names, the Last Supper, uh, the Last Supper, Holy Communion, Eucharist, the Great Thanksgiving. And we had dinner church a few weeks ago, kind of like a practice run, and we talked about what communion meant to us, and more than one person at my table said, communion is a meal of thankfulness to me. It's when I remember what God has done for me, and when I give thanks to God. One of my first weeks in grad school, I was uh, trying to find a church uh, church to go to, so I took the bus to Harvard Epworth United Methodist Church because I thought going to a church with Harvard in the name would be pretty cool. And I, I went to their early service, which is a service of Holy Communion. Now, if you've been here a while, you know that we kind of come down here and we ad-lib the story and we receive communion, but... It really, if you pulled out your hymnal and opened it, you could see that there are lots of prayers and songs. There are things that we say, and you can really make a whole service just about communion. And that's what this service was. In a room about this size and a crowd much smaller than this, I watched a 70 or 80-year-old man kneel down at the altar rail to receive communion. And I started to think about all the times he had kneeled down to receive communion and how that gift that God had been giving them, giving him was this continual thing that he kept going back for. And then a moment later, a parent and child knelt beside him. And I thought about how generations have come through that church and received communion. I thought about my friends across uh, the country and around the world who were gathering that day for the same holy meal. And it was this moment of gratitude that God connects us to each other this way. On some altar tables, I know I'm getting kind of nerdy here, but on some altar tables, it'll say, do this in remembrance of me. And we're talking about remembering God and what God has done done for us, but we're also remembering, putting back together the body of Christ, because each one of us is a part of that. I could talk about communion a long time, and in a moment, we're going to celebrate it like we do at the first of every month in this service. And this is a gift that's open to everyone, no matter whether you're a member of this church, how you identify, whether or not you've been baptized. It's a gift from God. It's this holy meal, and if we think about the kind of people Jesus ate with, we know that we're invited too. And sometimes I'll get comments from people, that, and they'll say, what do, I, what do I say when I, when they hand me the bread and juice? It's kind of this awkward exchange. It's holy, but it's awkward. And I remember this time I was serving communion to a little kid, and the mom was with him, and uh, she said, now say, thank you, Jesus. And the kid looked me dead in the eyes and said, thank you, Jesus. And really, there's no right answer. You can say amen, or you can say nothing at all. But for today, I think that might actually be the appropriate response. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. And you don't have to say that out loud because you're not saying it to the server, but when you come to receive communion, say that as a prayer and as a thanks to God for the provision in your life. So as we prepare for this meal, I invite you to consider who this meal is connecting you to. 
Maybe you need to be reminded that this meal connects you to your family and your loved ones that are far away or that are no longer with us. Maybe that you need to remember that you're all part of the same body, even though you're apart. Maybe you need to be reminded that you share this meal with people you call your enemies and that they're also a part. Whatever that is looking like for you, know that it's a special meal given for you and for many. So on the night Jesus gathered with his disciples, it was a meal that was much like the Passover meal. There was, they were filled with tension and anxiety. They didn't know what was to come. They didn't know what kind of wilderness journey they'd be in. But they gathered, they stopped and they gathered for this meal. And Jesus took bread and he broke it. And then when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup and he passed it around. This is a meal given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Thank you, God. Let's pray. Holy God, pour out your Holy Spirit on these gifts of bread and cup that they might be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can be the body of Christ to a world redeemed by his blood. Amen. I'll invite those who are assisting to come forward now. And as they do so, I'll remind you that this is a table that's open to everyone. It's a gift and it's for all who are hungry. The ushers will help you, guide you, but you'll come down the outside aisles. You'll receive the elements and you can receive them and kneel and pray at the altar if you like, or head back to your seat. There's a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. All the love I've never found comes like a flood. Flowing down At the cross, at the cross I surrender my life I'm in awe of you I'm in awe of you Where your love ran red And my sin washed white I owe Sin washed white 
I'm going to close out today with another song. Um, and as we do, I, I feel like I just want to make sure that we explain every now and again. When we do music in church, it's not a, it's not a show. It's not a performance. Um, we're supposed to be leading you in singing praises to God. I know that, that everybody doesn't like to do that, and that's, that's fine. Um, if you don't want to sing, just know that you're ignoring God's command in your life. <laughs> so, uh, you know, deal with that however you want to. This, the song that we're going to end with is yet not I, but through Christ in me. And one of the recurring themes that we always need to remember as we try to faithfully follow God in our lives is that we are human, which means we are flawed, which means we are failed we are almost designed to fail. That's why we have Christ. That's why we're forgiven. And that is the news we're supposed to share with the world. It's not about how we're perfect or we're better than them because we're believers. It's how we know that we're saved and that we're redeemed because we are believers. So as we think about what our jobs are, remember that. And as we sing this, this last song together, Remember that God is calling you every second of every day to look at somebody and say that they are blessed, they are loved, they are redeemed, and if they don't know that, we've got a place that we can bring them on Sunday morning to where we can tell them that. That's what we're here to do. So let's sing this one last song and then get ready to go take on the week for Jesus. What gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer? There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold. My hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is but I am not forsaken, Lord, by my side, the Savior, he will stay. Oh, don't fall in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need, his power is displayed. not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am for 
forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid for Jesus' blood and suffered for my pardon. And he was raised to overthrow the grave. I hold my sin has been This I hope, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home. And day by day, I know, oh, he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. last line one more time but uh, the race is complete still my lips shall repeat not I, but through Christ in me amen thanks for worshiping with us today I hope you uh Grab a card for dinner church. Invite a friend. There's someone here you don't know too. So go ahead and meet someone you haven't met yet. But until we meet again, may you go in peace and thankfulness. Amen.